Hello everyone, it's me, Hype Wolfcon here, and we are here for the Rising Phoenix pre-season prediction video. Um, this is supposed to be coming out on a Saturday night, so uh, if it's out Sunday, I'm sorry guys, I'm just, yeah, I'm a bit too lazy, <clears throat> but nope. I wanted to get this pre-season prediction video off. We have 13 drivers currently in our league, as you can see them all here. Obviously, I'm, I'm my main account's not racing, but... I'm just going to get into it, talk about the drivers, about their teams, and out what we can expect from them this season. I'm going to start at the back, as I always have done. And uh, that is with a guy who has, actually hasn't got the get, hasn't, um, no, has got the game, sorry, but isn't very fast, and his name is TTV Who Cares. Unfortunately, he's not in this yet. But uh, he is, but well, he's basically a slower driver, and not being horrible to him, but I think he's going to be in 20th. I know a lot of these guys, and I know that a lot of them have been racing for quite a while. But I think the the back of the pack here, probably from, I don't know, let's say 15th downwards, could really go anywhere between 15th and 20th. I think not many points for any of them. But TCV, who cares, is just the man I put in bottom spot. Let's hope he can improve on that, and instead actually get high, a higher position. Then in a 19th position, I would put YouTube Ash. Now he is teammates obviously with Navy in Alfa Romeo. However, I feel like he'll be the teammate that lets the side down, uh, just like Giovinazzi does in real life. <sighs> Harsh, but fair. And uh, you know, the young kid doesn't really play much F1 that often, and uh, yeah, only really races, in all fairness, when he's either in a league race. But he spends most of his time on Fortnite, so. You know, I don't think he'll get as much practice in as the rest of the, the league. And, uh, you know, I really think that he'll struggle, I think, uh, you know, with his re reputation of racing, he'll just crash out quite a bit or make a few too many mistakes. Especially in this new game, it's quite easy to do so. Then in 18th place, I have put Valkyrie 1999. Valkyrie spends more of his time on games like GT Sport and Tom Clancy's. So, uh... I don't really expect him to be up there with, you know, the likes of first, second, and third. However, what Valkyrie does have on his side, and I have to be honest, is he will put in the time and the effort to get faster and get better at the game. And that's really what why I think Valkyrie goes above the other two, is I think he'll go above and beyond, and he will try his best to, you know, get clear points and stuff. And uh, obviously, he, his team, I actually don't know if he's here. I don't know. He, his teammate's not here, but... Yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. Who's his team? <laughs> I can't be on forgetting who's, t who's his teammate. But, um, yeah. So, he is going in 18th place. In 17th is a man who's also not here yet. And his name is Robbie... Oh, his teammate's TTV. Who cares? Sorry. But, no. Uh, Robbie... I believe will be in 17th as he, he hasn't got the game yet and not being harsh but I've seen how certain people in this league have struggled with the new game and you know how different it is so he might not even have it by Australia which is obviously the first round of the season so it could be that he's starting on the back foot for Australia and then he'll be forced to remake really up some ground however I think he'll do so he, he said to me that when he uh, signed up, he wasn't the strongest. However, he did say he'd persevere as much as possible and uh, try and get a high position. Anyway, in 16th would be our newest Greek racer, Gyansgate. Don't want to be harsh to him. I, I really can't say his name, and I do apologise. One of the two racers in Haas uh, this season. But uh, he's here. And uh, great notification, thanks. <clears throat> uh, he's here, sorry, to uh, you know really try his best as well. Like I said, uh, really 15th to 20th, all could be switched around. But I, th I think he'll be one of those players who are in the mid pack, but just unfortunately get 11th or 12th a few too many times, and uh, gets unlucky. However, I have seen him race a bit. He's clean. He's a very good driver, and he's a very good person too. He's not here to make friends, but he's also not here to win. He says so. Uh, He's only got competitive spirit, but also knows to take it just as a fun league, which is what Rising Phoenix is. Anyway, in 15th 
is Dark Phoenix. Dark Phoenix is in the racing points this season and he's got faster since the F1 2018 days but there's a big downside. The fact that I know he's learning how to use medium traction control and really isn't working. It isn't going too well for him. But I think he can definitely get a few good few points here and there. Just like probably anyone at the back. I think everyone will get some points. But it could be a long hard season for him. Especially being carried by his teammate in racing points. Moving on in to 14th is Sticky Bomb 04. One of the two Williams drivers here this season has joined us and uh, on a very controversial topic, but I'm not going to get into that. We're glad to have him and uh, honestly, we really hope the best for him. I really think he, he's he got the pace this season and uh, due to no more lag issues really for him, we're hoping that he can get as high position as he can and really challenge for Probably 7th or 8th almost every race. However, I do believe 14th is where he'll be because I trust that every other racer in this league above him just has that slight bit more. Except one who's in 13th, which is LK Avan. Now, the reason LK Avan is only in 13th is he's not got the game yet. And also, I believe he's on, in my opinion, he's on the same level as Sticky Bomb. Both of them are good races in their own right. However, it's going to be a tough challenge to see which of the two goes above. LK Van obviously in the Haas this season. That it'll, those two will be fighting it out for those points positions. Really just try, going hammer and tongue against each other. And I think it'll be a hot, long, hard-fought season between the two of them. Anyway, in 12th place is our one lonely American man, Navy, a.k.a. Vinny been racing with me for a very very long time and uh, obviously he's being he's got his teammate Ash there however Vinny's got faster every year he's played the game with me so F F1 20 2016 he was very very slow 2017 I was just faster and 2018 he goes a whole second above me 2019 boom I really think he's got it this year and I really think that he can keep pushing and keep getting as fast lap times, and he could possibly challenge the top six, along with the guys in front. However, the one problem for Vinny, which holds him back, is the fact that he can only race sa Saturdays. So, uh, unfortunately, he's only able to race one one of the two days a week, which will uh, really half his chances of getting points. Meanwhile, in 11th place is uh, another person who's not here uh, ne by the name of Albert Wars Tian. Not see ya, my good friend. But they're in the racing points along with Dark Phoenix. Uh, they have the game, and I've been practicing with our Wolves because obviously I want to be there to help my friends and to help them get better. And you know they're they're quite a bit faster than me, so it's really good to see that you know after a disastrous F1 2018 uh, back in SSR for them when they uh, got kicked a few times. Now they're back in here, they've proven to me why they're clean, and they've really improved on their lap times and how they drive. So yeah, I'm really excited to see what they do. Moving on anyway, to 10th place. A man who I really thought optimistically about, but then I kind of realised he's on holiday for the first two weeks of the season. So which will be missing Australia and Bahrain, and possibly China, which will be sippy. Uh, now this guy's been been a uh, you know very very close to fast racers such as such as uh, LR Sparks or LRL Brett, and obviously when he was with me at SSR as well, I tried to get Sparks and Brett to you know, really help him and develop him as a driver, which he has done a lot, and I really think this year he could be one of those drivers to be up near the front and just try and push on the front guys, whom obviously I haven't mentioned yet, and uh, really. You know, get the best out of his car. However, again, he can't race f Saturdays. So he's only available for Fridays. Obviously, he has LRL. Which I also check, tell you lot to go check out. Because it's a, it's a league that's run by Sticky Bomb, Sippy, LR Sparks and LRL Brett. 
So uh, I suggest you go check it out. You know, I I don't have a link to it. It's not even if they have a YouTube channel or whatever, but you know, just just go check them out. I'm sure you can literally just search them up or just message Sticky Bill as you can see here. That there's his name. There you go. But anyway, in ninth place after my paid promotion, <clears throat> non-paid. Ninth place is a Red Phoenix, the first of the Toro Rossos, and obviously it won't, it won't be the last. The Red Phoenix had a had a few issues last year, I'm not going to lie. Got quite angry at the game. And me, especially. But this year, apparently, he's taken a step back, and he's just going there to race for fun. And I really think that it'll be fun for him. And uh, with how his teammate has improved, who obviously I haven't mentioned yet, I think Red Phoenix has a really good chance to battle with not just his teammate, but the drivers around him, Sippy and Sticky Bomb, but both the Williams drivers, obviously, along with Navy and LK Van. The Red Phoenix, I expect, I really do think you'll be in ninth, my friend. If you're not, oh well. I just kind of overestimated him. But oh well. Anyway, on to eighth place, and we have Machine Fishy. Uh, Machine Fishy was actually one of the first drivers we signed up to the league. Uh, he uh, trialed us for a few races. And, you know, he seemed really, really quick. But I think he's got eighth place here. Uh, obviously, he's hoping that him and his teammate, Robbie, can both pull up strings in this league. And he's quoted, I, I quote him, and he says, we will win the Constructors. Now, as you can see on this pre-season pre prediction video, Machine Fishy, no. 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 <laughs> but anyway... Obviously, he's he's been out there to say he thinks he'll win it, so I'm I'm really excited to see what he can do. However, the boy from Northern Ireland hasn't st spoken about any one of the top seven. Now, in F in actual F1, there's a top six. This year, I think there's a top seven. And in seventh place will be Mr. Dudo Free, the second Toro Rosso. And my best driver out of the top three teams, which is obviously Mercedes, Ferrari, and Red Bull. I really think he's got the best chance of winning the best for the rest competition. But I think he could go even further, and I think he can challenge for race wins. Now, I'm not saying that to be over-optimistic, being optimistic, but... Mr. Dude has what, it's, what it takes, and if he puts the effort into the game and really pushes for for wins, I think he can do it. He's only about a second and a second off the guy who's in who I put in first place for this champ for uh, the league. So, you know, being a second off, not too bad for him. However, I think there's a big gap in these top six, even though they'll be fighting each other the whole way through. So Mr. Dude, good luck to you. I think you'll be seventh, my friend. In sixth place, is even joined. Yes, he has. Is the first of the two Red Bulls, Hassan Daddy. Hassan has lost a bit of pace in this year's F1. I remember back in F1 2017, with there was there were really good fights between Hassan and Opiolu and uh, Legende. You know, the three of them really pushed each other. Hassan most of the time winning, in fact. But there was great races by him, and uh, now. He, I think he's going to be sixth place. He's just lost quite a bit of that pace. And looking at his times at Australia, I think he's kind of just lost only a bit, only a few tenths. But those few tenths will be costly to the guys in front of him, who I know will jump at him instantly. Anyway, moving on to one of the people who doesn't have the game yet, and that is Tibson. Tibson normally had a competitive spirit and was always fighting with Opiolu. Uh, back in F1 2018. However, the problem now is, Tibbs, without having the game, Tibson can miss quite a few races. And if and if he doesn't miss a few races, then he'll still be very inexperienced for those races and learning the new game, which could be very costly at the start of the season. And it'll mean he's got a real catch-up to do. Now, I think we're in front of Hassan because Hassan's lost a bit of pace, and I think Hassan will will gain it back over the season, but not as fast as Tibson will. I think Tibson learns and learns quite quick. 
So Tivson should be able to recover from missing a few. But the boy in Mercedes has, you know, he, he's got it. And I think fifth place is his. And moving on to a man who hasn't chosen his team yet. <clears throat> it's a uh, Fire Phoenix using his old SSR account. The I think he'll be in fourth place. He's in the Ferrari, teammates of Opiolu. And I kind of think that he could be... And I've looked at his uh, pace and stuff. He obviously got the game yesterday, but he's really improved on his old times. And, you know, looks to be one of the drivers to beat this year. However, I only think... I think wins are possible, definitely, but he's going to have a real struggle, especially with a teammate like Hoppiolu. And with my third and second place, I think he's going to be a bit annoyed at this. So in third place, and he's not actually here, but it's Fire Phoenix's brother, Black Phoenix, who's in the Mercedes. Black Phoenix, obviously, in his favourite car. I think he'll get third place. He's been really sweating out time trial been trying to get the best times on every track learning the new car however I just think that Black Phoenix may not have improved as much as he needs to to be able to be at the top of his game fighting for the win but we'll have to see anyway into second place we have a Red Bull surprisingly and it's Agent Limitless the odds of rain in this game have decreased by a bit which I've realised. And Limitless is the rain master, apparently. But he loves the wet conditions. And if tracks like Britain and, well, I, mm, there are a few other wet tracks that are quite often wet. But Britain's the main one that everyone would agree with. You know, if tracks like Britain are to go by and it does rain and downpour, there is a no doubt in my mind that he'll get the win. And yes, he makes a few mistakes, but he is still a brilliant driver, even when it's not wet. The only problem, and the only reason he's not first, is because he's going to miss a few gay races because of Plymouth. Because he's a Plymouth fan, and he decided to watch Plymouth Argyle. I'm not annoyed at all, because I want to see a good title fight. But that won't happen. In first place, and I think this is going to be a domination season. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But domination season by Opiolu. The man in the Ferrari has what it takes. I really think he is going to go out there and prove that he can win. He's got this whole summer off so he can sweat the game out. And... You know, unlike people like Hassan who have jobs, or people like me who has a job, and, uh, for example, Navy, Valkyrie, you know, he's there and he's able to just sweat the game out to the point where basically he can do whatever he likes because he'll just sweat it out. And I really think he's got that first place in the bag. So... I will also say my constructors, I do believe the winners will be Ferrari. I think they've got it. And there's no doubt in my mind there will be a tight battle between Ferrari, Red Bull, Mercedes. However, I think Ferrari will probably win it by the time we get to USA. However, I could be wrong. And I'm happy to admit that I could be wrong. It's a pre-season prediction. This is my prediction. This is what I think will happen. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Tell me who you think's going to win. Tell me who you think's going to be the first DNF. And tell me who you think is going to get the first grid penalty. Just just, to prove to you that we can actually give penalties. Look. Opiolu. Uh, let's just... Uh, hmm, how many places do we want to give you as a penalty? Oh. Oh, that that's perfect. That's perfect. Yes, yes, yes. It's obviously a joke. It's obviously a joke. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> but anyway, thank you ever so much for watching. Please do give, a, give us a like. 
subscribe if you're new around here and click the notification bell because we all know YouTube is a brox is a broken 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 so I just wanted to sing broken because that's how I feel right now yeah <laughs> anyway I'll see you all next week on Sunday probably where we'll have race one roundup and uh, the plan for that will be each week I do a roundup. Oh, I'll either be each week or after each race. I'll do a roundup of what happened in the race. I might be able to get the highlights. I don't know how they work yet, but I'll have a look. And I'll literally just say this happened, this happened, who got the win, what the standings are looking like. And I really think and um, it'll be good to see. You know, who comes out on top by the end of it. I mean, it should either be race by race or week by week on the Sunday, hopefully. Or Monday, if I've got football on Sunday. Obviously, that won't be until August, so don't worry, guys. But anyway, thanks all for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.